we'd no sooner got in the pictures. And woof! Next thing I know, I'm laying like that. When I got to 14, I went to the Labour Exchange and I said, I'm 14 now and I would like to go to work. So she said, oh yes, sign my birth certificate, your age, you had to show all these things in your identity card. She said, uh, uh, what do you want to do? So I said, well, I like needlework, I like making things. So she said, well, you've got to do something for the war effort. And I knew about 10 minutes walk away, there was a factory that made pens. We made screws, we made all sorts of things to help the war effort. And then they found this big old machine in the yard. And a couple of men came and got it out and looked at it. And they said, well, that was a machine that they were looking for. And spoke to my governor. It was set up and he said, is there anybody here who can read a blueprint? So I said, yes, I can read a blueprint. With the material they, you, they bought us, they want a thousand pieces. I made a thousand and there was little bits over and I made another six out of the little odds and ends. Packed it all up, covered the machine up, cleaned it all down and off it. It was put away. And about a week later, the governor came down waving a bit of paper. He said, we've got the contract. He said, I want you to make all those parts. He said, but they're not going through the factory. I had a cubicle and I worked on my own. And every night, everything had to be packed away and locked up, the whole lot. And in the morning, I went back to start the machine again. All I had to do was keep up with at least a thousand out of the material that they bought. And it had fumes on it and I was supposed to drink a pint of milk a day. Sometimes I got the milk, sometimes I didn't. But I worked on my own. I made these bits, I didn't know what they were. I just made them and they had no name. They were parts. I had to go and have my eyes tested and I went to a hospital in London and saw the chap and he had my papers there and he, he was opening them. Oh, he said, you was one of the little girls that made the bits for Radar. So I said, did I? He said, well, yeah, that's what it's got here. I said, well, I never knew that. I didn't know what I was doing. He said, well, that's why they didn't tell you. It was highly secret. <laughs> they started bombing London. They was hoping to bomb it into submission. Aeroplanes would come over to drop bombs wherever they could. And if they saw the barrage balloons, they used to fly back to Germany, but they could not land with their bombs. They let them go, and that is how I got bombed. A friend of mine who worked in the factory, uh, she, had, she was engaged to a boy in the army, and uh, she came into work because he'd gone back off leave, and she looked very miserable, and I said, there was some other genie. She said, well, Stan's gone back because he's in the army, she said, and we've got no honeymoon, nothing. We just had a week together. And she looked really down, so I said, well, look, um, I won't go dancing tonight, Jeannie. We're going to pitch us, cheer you up. All right, she said, so that's what we did. We'd no sooner got in the pictures, and woof! Next thing I know, I'm laying like that. And I, I turned like that and I looked down and there was a bomb. And Jeannie was calling Stan, her husband's name. And I was holding her and she moved. And then she stopped moving and she died. Been married just those few days. Floods of tears, they can come now. And I thought, poor Jeannie. And I must have become unconscious because the next thing I knew, I was in the hospital and they were cutting my clothes off. And I heard her say, well, this will have to be an amputation. I 
I still needed a doctor care. And my mother didn't think I was walking. And when I came home from the hospital, I spent the rest of the day and I went to bed and in the morning she brought a bowl of water in and I had a wash and uh, I got dressed. She said, what are you doing? She said, you stay in bed. I said, no, Mum. I, I, I'm going out. I can walk. I didn't think you could walk. She said, you haven't got your leg. I said, but I've got crutches. I can go out. And when I looked in my wardrobe, there was no shoes left, no clothes left. My mother got rid of them all because she thought I'd spend the rest of my life in bed. So there was a little brouhaha between me and Mummy. However, I, I did start going out and uh, you gradually learn to cope with disability. Eventually I was fitted up with an artificial leg. I looked normal, I wear clothes, slacks, and of course I was going out and about and I had boyfriends, lots of boyfriends. I had Derek, he worked in the factory and he was a boxer, he was a big bloke, big chap. He got called up and went in the army and he said to me, would you write to me? And I wrote to Derek and he came home on leave and he was talking to me and he said to me, have you been back to the pictures since? So I said, well, no, I said, I didn't really want to go. So he said, face your demons, I'm going to take you to the pictures. He dragged me off to the pictures, same pictures where it happened. It had all been repaired. He got seats near enough where I had been sitting. And he, he, he got me tight and I sat down and he sat next to me. He got his arms around me. He said, what's the film? So I'm looking at the film got interested and then I'm sitting there like that I sat there and watched the film and then I thought well there's nothing here to frighten me nothing it's not going to happen again and afterwards I said well did you enjoy the film I said yeah I remember it was Sanja Heaney doing one of her ice skating performances so he, he said there we are he said and now you'll go to the pictures in future won't you and he was 21. And he got me back in the pictures. And he asked me to marry him. And I said, no, it was fun. He was a good, a good, good chap. He was, he was kind. But I didn't, I liked him, I didn't love him. And I had to love somebody that much that I couldn't live without them. And then, like with my husband, we had 64 happy years together. He said, I married you to look after you and the boys. He said, and that is how it will be.